And um, then I would hear an answer to my question, all right? So when I asked him about uh, John and his body and how, how it got here, he didn't really have a good answer for me. He did tell me another one of his creepy stories, and this time the creepy story was about um, John. Do you want to hear that, or did you want to ask me something else first? Well, I would like to uh, – a couple other real quick questions. Um, what was John's purpose here? What was his main agenda with you know the military and, and his purpose here? What was that? Okay. Um, when you ask, when I've asked about that, and I got answers back on that one over a time span of about 20 years. Okay. So I have to sometimes put things together like a puzzle. Um, and the, the answer to that, um, question is a little involved. Do you you have one more that you want me to go through before I, I answer that? Yeah, just one quick one. What do you mean when you say, um, it would be biologically hostile to us on these places. Well, let me give you an example of uh, how about the flu, the annual flu. Okay, right? gotcha. It's it's a, it's a disaster. Every single, I mean, um, in in what was it, 2012, the vaccine didn't work, and 46,000 people um, lost their lives because of it. That was reported. Because um, usually in the reporting of flu, they die for some other reason, like lung failure or uh, liver failure or some bodily function failure, okay? So it doesn't always get listed. But in 2012, 46,000 uh, people. I mean, I grew up in a town on the Jersey Shore of 28,000. So I have to think in my mind, well, my entire town twice over got wiped out. You know, it was like coming home and, Coming home to your hometown, everybody's gone. 46,000 people dead. So, and that was just in North America. You know, the rest of the planet had the same problem. So, in 2012, we're probably uh, looking at, what, 150, 180,000 people dead worldwide. So, it's a disaster, okay? And that's an example of a bug that changes very quickly. Like, for example, this year, they were expecting like a half dozen, half dozen specific flu um, events to occur in, in North America based on events around the world. Well, they have an odd A flu out there that nobody knows where it came from. Okay, and so the flu season uh, started at the end of November, and if you look on the <clears throat> CDC's website, you'll see that states are been turning red uh, for the last five months when it should only be starting right about now, right about February. And it's all because they got something out there that not only has no one been inoculated against, as far as they can tell, it's never existed before. So it's very dangerous. And uh, anyway, that just the flu bug alone, okay, is an example of an extremely hostile environment, okay? And if you left here and went to another world and just encountered that one single pathology, okay, you'd be gone. It would just be like when Christopher Columbus showed up and met all the Native Americans and he came back three months later. They were all gone. They didn't leave. They died. All right? And that was because he showed up. Uh, you're you're not inoculated for everything that goes on on those other planets, and they're not inoculated for what goes on here. So we're talking about a, a biologically engineered entity whose entire purpose is basically to be a spacesuit in this environment. Right. That so then, yeah. So then, Go back ahead. to uh, John's purpose and his agenda here with the military. What was that all about then? Okay. He didn't have an agenda with the military at all, all right? Um, the military or the intelligence community, through whatever devices, they, John, uh, John and others like him from other places decided to make first contact. But they decide the rules of first contact. 
And so within the context of those rules, um, they decided that the United States, because it's the most successful um, culturally, uh, intellectually, militarily, and economic in the history of this planet, okay, this was the leadership group that would be the facilitator that they would communicate with. Now, why they chose that particular moment in human history to do that, I don't know the answer to that question, okay? But that's the reason um, they were involved with the military. Not necessarily, let's, let me correct it again, the intelligence community, which also includes the military. The intelligence community yeah, facilitating whatever it is they're doing, uh, which is, abs as far as I understand it, um, John is an anthropologist. He is, um, he's part of a race of people. Uh, they don't consider us, well, let me give you the example of the apes and, and monkeys in the woods and forest of Africa. Um, that's not how they look at us. They look at us as fully sentient beings, just like themselves. However, they are as far above us on the evolutionary scale as we are above the chimpanzees in our forest. And uh, from their perspective, we are extremely dangerous. And I guess that's why the rules, let's call them the rules of engagement, that's why the rules of engagement are what they are. They're extremely limited, and uh, to most of the government and, and, and federal agents, uh, they're blind. It's simply a, a non-program. And so Josh's employer didn't exist, doesn't exist. Did I answer that enough? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Now, a, a question is, why are they here? What, what, what is their motive to come up to Earth and, and communicate? Let's, let's separate them out first, okay? okay? Let's separate out all the UFOs and all the people, that, all the body snatchers. Let's, let's, just, let's just put them in one group. And in the other group, let's put John and maybe three or five other races, okay? Let's just, let's just, let's just keep it to three. I, I never heard of actually any, any, any others, but it was explained to me a couple of times, okay? So let's say there's, there's three other anthropologists from other planets on this planet, and, and John was one of them, okay? So why did they come here? Well, in the case of John and those two other races that we're talking about, uh, they're, they're, they've been a space faring race for over 800,000 years. And you would think that uh, an, an advanced, tech, uh, technically advanced civilization like that would have all the records from their own past, and it would all be solid, and they would completely understand where they came from and how they got to where they were going and yada, yada, yada. But the truth is, is that they don't really have a solid history of how they got to where they are. And so they, they come here to observe the basics of development. And, and we're part of that basic. Okay. We're heading for that quantum leap that I was talking about. And at one point in their history, they were heading for that quantum leap. And they are, they're kind of reliving um, the leap uh, by watching us. And, uh, that's what they are doing here. Now, let's talk about all the others <laughs> because it's a completely different category. And the reason that is has absolutely, almost absolutely nothing to do with the human race. It is our solar system that is a, mo a marvel uh, to these other races. And they come here kind of to observe the details. And why is our system so different? Well, most systems have two suns in them. That's just, that's just a starter. 
and um, we have a a perfect sun, and we're in a perfect place from that sun, and uh, the neighborhood has been cleaned. There aren't any hazards to wipe out our civilization, and uh, or there is just a minor statistical hazard out there where we could be wiped out maybe sometime in the next 10,000 years or whatever. But for the most part, um, we live in an extremely peaceful environment in space. And that's extraordinary, you see. And uh, it turns out this system has been terraformed. It doesn't, it's not a naturally occurring system. Who did it? And, uh, well, um, apparently John answered this question, and he had no problem answering it. Um, so it's no, at least from his perspective, it's no big secret. Um, and, and I want to caution you and your audience about this, because we have a word in our um, science fiction history uh, and culture um, that we use too much. And so as I apply it to this situation, it, it sounds like a contrivance, all right? And, and I'm going to use this word um, because I don't have anything else in the English language to use. I, um, and uh, and that, is a, so, uh, that is the myth or the, uh, of the scientific myth of the first one, the first people, uh, the first intelligent race. Okay, um, so the story goes something like this: uh, Sometime in the recent past, and mind you, the way they tell time isn't the same way as we tell time. So, a recent past to them could be anything within the last five hundred years. Uh, uh, Josh is race. I mean, uh, John's race, and uh, the other associate races. Uh, became aware of a very peculiarity between uh, some of the planets like ours and some of the similar systems like ours. In, in, in the Milky Way, where we have something like 48 billion stars, and there's, there's, there should be statistically a planet that forms like this um, maybe five times in the life of that galaxy. All right, and apparently, the, and we're, we will eventually find this out ourselves because we're, we're searching for this very particular, and we have the scientific uh, methodology to do it. In, in the Milky Way, there's something like 50 systems like ours. They're not exactly like Earth. Like I said before, the gravity is a little more or a little less. They're not exact replicas of Earth, okay, but what we do have in common with these other worlds is a fossil history that is absolutely uncanny. And um, so sometime in their recent past, John's race came to the conclusion that this world and those other worlds about 500 million years ago had been seeded with these basic fossil creatures. Well, you know, so we're talking, basically what we're talking about is our Cambrian explosion, okay? Within a very short period of time, a, a tremendous amount of life came into existence on this planet after the ozone formed for the first time, which was about 500 million years ago. And um, those, the, our fossil record matches the fossil record from these other planets, Okay. So that's the number one draw right there, our commonality. It shouldn't exist. It's statistically impossible. And what's statistically impossible means that there was a paradigm shift. And the statistical goddess is never wrong. And I would put it out there to anyone who's had basic statistics in high school or college. You can form one graph for the inner solar system and another graph.